In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between dog daycare and boarding and doing it in a commercial facility versus doing it in your home or someone else's home. Now, our recommendation is that puppies should not go to daycare until they are six months to one year of age, and uh, the confidence is more important than the age. Um, and I'm gonna explain why in a minute. Now, dog daycares are great. We do our uh, classes here in Omaha at Dogtopia. They are great facilities. They are amazing places to take adult dogs that are confident around other dogs. If you take your puppy to dog daycare facilities too early, it can often create problems that may prevent you from doing so for the rest of their life. Dogs go through, puppies go through fear periods the first year of their life, multiple times. Now, if something negative happens to a puppy during a fear period, they're gonna be more likely to carry that fear with them for years, if not the rest of their life. And so it's really not advisable or really worth the risk. Now, uh, why, why do we say this? Well, dog daycare is basically, puppies are practicing everything they do, including their play style. So are, you gonna be, are we gonna go with the zip tie or are we gonna, oh, we can't get to the zip tie there we got the right place. Little trick, uh, zip tying a bully stick or a tendon to a, uh, a, a weight here can keep the dog occupied. And this is by, I should mention, this is Wrigley. Uh, Emily, our uh, social media coordinator, letting us borrow him for the shoot, these shooting these videos. So basically in a dog daycare facility, they're gonna have about 30 to 40 dogs. They're adult dogs of all different shape, shapes, sizes, and energy levels. Some of them are gonna play nice, some of them are not gonna play nice. Puppies are practicing everything that they do. If you let a puppy practice playing too roughly, that is a really hard habit to break, which is during why during our puppy classes, we incorporate play breaks so often, um, anytime the dog's energy level gets too high. And we would recommend that you do that. At dog daycare facilities, the, there's one or two attendants for 20 to 40 dogs. They do not have the ability or time to give breaks for puppies or adult dogs. All they're looking to do is make sure that it doesn't get too high to the point where it gets into a fight. Uh, now, certain daycare facilities are going to be better than others. Dogtopia we love because they have a security camera. And if you ever do go to a dog daycare facility, make sure you get a place that you can observe your dog through the security camera. Those people that are watching their dogs are going to know that they're on camera. They're going to probably act a little bit more responsibly. Also, there are a couple daycare, uh, there's a daycare facility here in Omaha that's in the downtown area that is owned by Tully's Kennels that has a different name. I'm not going to say it on camera, but they, uh, because Tully's uh, buys uh, puppies from puppy mills and we don't want to support anything for puppy mills, we would recommend you do a little bit of research. Uh, Dogtopia is a great one. There are other good daycare facilities, but again, for puppies, if they're playing with these adult dogs too roughly, that could be uh, very quickly turned into a negative experience during a fear period that might be long lasting for your puppy, and your puppy is also going to practice playing too roughly without those timeouts. Also, puppies need to sleep anywhere from 12 to 17 hours a day. They are not going to sleep when they're at daycare. They're going to be just uh, wanting to play with the dogs nonstop, and that's going to be beyond their limit. Uh, additionally, uh, dog daycare facilities can have a regression in potty training because they do not take the puppies out for potty breaks. So your pu puppy is, if you're having problems with potty training, I guarantee you a dog daycare facility is going to make it worse because they're going to practice peeing in the room. Now, if you do have a very high energy puppy, I understand that they're crazy. That's why we have that puppy class parents page so you can set up play dates for the these puppies. You want to go for this instead? There you go. Uh, so setting up a play date with another puppy is more is important because puppies give off a pheromone. Adult dogs will smell the puppy's pheromones and won't correct it the way they would normally for an adult dog. Or uh, and so the puppy will practice playing inappropriately. And if it does that, uh, then it, when the pheromones wear off, those puppies will often start getting attacked by other dogs later in life. Um, also, uh, the puppy class parents page, those are other puppies that are not only close to your puppy's age, um, but all, and those puppies, because they have the pheromones, are not gonna, uh, it's not gonna stop them from correcting and giving feedback to the other puppies. Also, these are puppies that have taken our classes, so they understand the importance of play dates, um, they understand the same techniques that we're using, and so you're not gonna have a lot of the problems where when you go to daycare, you wanna come up here? There we go, buddy. Uh, you're not going to know what those dogs' uh, energy level are, how nice, uh, how well socialized they are, and things along those lines. So setting up those day, uh, those play dates in a puppy class parents page is much better than setting up a play date or then going to dog daycare. Um, you can also, if you have a high energy dog, get a dog walker. Just make sure you talk to the dog walker about the tools that you want to use. We are force free, positive reinforcement. We don't use prong collars, shock collars, choke chains. We've had a number of people have hired dog walkers and find out after a month or two that they're using a prong collar on the dog in a walk or they're jerking the leash. Things that 
we don't advise. So make sure you definitely talk to your dog walker. And if you are looking for one, uh, we usually have members of, of staff that actually do walk dogs on the side. So if that's something you're interested in, you might ask your instructor and they might be able to get, provide somebody that might want to do that for you. Uh, now, uh, I would also make sure that you check references of uh, the places and look at their uh, look at their reviews. That's going to be a nice way to identify whether or not uh, you know it's a popular place. Um, also, a dog daycare that does not, when you do get your puppy of age and you want to take it in there, um, if they do not take your puppy away from you and do a demo, uh, do an evaluation, I would definitely not take my puppy to that daycare because that means the other dogs are also not being evaluated. You might get an aggressive dog. Um, a lot of dogs have resource guarding problems and other things, and like I said, during a fear period, it's just not worth it. When your puppy does get to be six months or older, uh, I would recommend probably waiting until they're a year so we're done with these fear periods. If you do want to try daycare, I would recommend you start off with a half day of daycare. Um, and I would try to set it up a day there where you can watch on that camera and see how your puppy does. Does it sit in the corner and snap at the other dogs? Well, that's not a good positive experience. Uh, is it running around playing? Uh, great. Is it having other dogs playing with it too rough? You can decide whether or not that you want them to continue doing that. And a half day is going to be more appropriate, especially uh, for the first couple times that you're doing that. There are also uh, uh, dog daycare facilities that do dog boarding. I would absolutely not have a puppy stay at a dog daycare facility until they're at least about a year old. Most of the dogs that I see, and, and I get called into dog daycare facilities across the country, most of these dogs have never been kennel trained. So they put them in the kennels at night. The dogs just howl all night long. That is a negative experience. It is stressful for your puppy, and is not. It, that means it's gonna interrupt the sleep that they're already gonna be underslept, and now they're gonna be stressed out. And if they're there for a week or two, that's gonna be a lot of stress. And if it happens during a fear period, that might be long lasting for the rest of your puppy's life. Um, if you are gonna do, uh, even if your dog is an adult dog, uh, I would make sure it's only a adult dog uh, over 12 months of age. If you're gonna do that, I would, uh, before you go out of town on vacation, I would go in there for a one day stay. So that way you can determine, you don't wanna take your dog to the dog daycare facility, get on the air flight and land in Tahiti and have them say, your dog is freaking out, come pick it up. Well, I'm 2,000 miles away. So uh, taking it to a dog daycare facility for a trial run is a great way to do that. However, if they are a puppy, they're under 12 months of age, I would recommend that you have someone come to your house to watch your dog there, or that you have somebody find somebody that watches dogs in their home. Now, uh, Anna is one of our instructors, and she watches my dogs personally when I travel to California or other parts of the country, but we have other instructors who also watch puppies. Now, you have the benefit of a puppy class instructor watching your puppy. They're gonna be working with your puppy a little bit uh, even though they're not paid to do so, because that's just what we do all the time. Also, we're gonna be using positive reinforcement. You know who they are, they're under uh, from our company, and so you know that they're a good, trusted source. Now, you could find other people that also do this on the side, and there are a lot of great options out there. However, I would make sure that you do a couple things. Check multiple references. I would get at least five references. And if you have a family member or friend who said, I'd love to do that, you know the family member or friend, but are they experienced in doing it? Just like any other skill, there are tricks of the trade. And if you know what to do, how to sue the puppy, how to uh, deal with a puppy who's uh, you know got separation anxiety, different things along those lines, they've dealt with it because they've had other puppies. So having a family or friend would uh, a family member or a friend to do that would be beneficial. But I prefer to find somebody that has a little bit more experience. Also, make sure they have a yard. I have talked to a number of people who hired somebody um, and uh, found out they didn't have a yard, so the puppy was regressing having accidents, and the people got frustrated and started punishing the puppy for having accidents in their home. Well, they didn't have a yard. So I would definitely not uh, take my puppy to a place that doesn't have a yard. Also, when you go there, when, you, uh, uh, when you're looking for these places, I would go there and check it out personally. I would walk the yard myself. Have they cleaned up the pup poop? Have I, and I'm gonna check the entirety of the fence and make sure that there are no holes in it. I have not talked to a number of people whose dogs have escaped from uh, home daycare, and that's a really bad experience because your puppy doesn't know the neighborhood. Um, if they have dogs there, I would, gear, I would absolutely never do it unless I have met that dog myself, and I've done a couple of dry runs like I talked about earlier, having your, maybe your dog go over there for uh, the day and see it. If they don't let you see their dogs, big red flag, never take your puppy there. Also make sure you talk to them about the tools and methods that you use. Um, one of our instructors uh, used to watch a dog and then she wasn't able to watch because they didn't ask soon enough. So if you are traveling, make sure you ask people in advance. Um, especially around the holidays, it's very busy. So she found somebody else, they found somebody else, and then they got a picture. They were using a shot collar and a prong collar on their Great Dane puppy. And neither one of those things were okay with the, with the guardian, and the person did not talk to them about that at all. So make sure you make it very explicit. Look, we do not punish our dogs, we do not spank our dogs, we do not use shock collars, choke chains, prong collars, alpha rolls, 
Um, we do not you know, uh, do any of those things and make sure that they understand that clearly. Um, a lot of people will tell you they're the one thing and then do something else. So and that's why you want to check out references. And I would also try to find, make sure that they have a reference of, of dogs that are similar to your dog. Is it a high energy dog? Is it a, a dog that has special needs and things along those lines? Um, and so that is going to be a much better option for daycare is finding somebody to come to your home. I like somebody to come to my home because I have the benefit of my home being protected as well. It's occupied and it's also confined. Uh, it's the environment my puppy feels most comfortable in. They're going to be most relaxed. Well, since my little buddy Wrigley here is about to crash for nap time, I think it's probably time for us to wrap up this video. So this is a little video on the difference between dog daycare and boarding uh, at a facility versus at uh, someone's home or having someone come to your home and watch your puppy. Quest, you are a goofball.